Well, I thought the dolls might be in the mood for some tacos. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy this project is. All right, we are going to start by making some corn tortillas, which we'll make into taco shells. Now you may notice, I don't have polymer clay in front of me. I have a piece of cardstock. Yeah, we're gonna make our tortillas and then our corn tortilla shells out of cardstock because, for several reasons. Number one, it's a project I've been wanting to play with for a very, very long time. I don't even know where I got the initial instructions from, which I've had to, to kind of, edit up and kind of change up a bit to do today because I couldn't get some of the materials. The instructions were so old that stuff that it called for weren't, wasn't available anymore. But something I've been wanting to play with. So we have a cream colored piece of cardstock and I cut this, it's the eight and a half wide by about three inches. And this will probably be way more than I'll need. Um, and a warning, this project, this part of our project is really, really, really messy. So be prepared for that. So we are going to start with our cream colored cardstock. You could use a light tannish beige color. I didn't have anything light enough in a beige. But I, I kind of played around with this already this morning and I like how it's looking. So we're going to work with three colors of craft paint. I have folk art in moon yellow. You want just kind of a deep kind of brightish yellow color. I have Golden Sunset from Apple Barrel, which is a yellow ochre color. And then finally we need a brown, and I'm using Woodsy Smoke. It's my favorite brown that I've got currently. I really like how it looks on things. So we're going to start with our, our moon yellow, our deep yellow. You just don't want a lemon yellow. You want something that's going to have some depth to it and just squirt it right on your paper is fine and use a paper towel because you want you really want to rub it in you don't need a paintbrush for this and I'm going to leave this end up here bare so that I don't have to get my fingers quite as messy so that's our first coat now while this is still got a little damp to it we don't want it to set up yet. We're going to take our yellow ochre color, put out a little bit on our work tile or any surface, get another paper towel and just crumple it up. And kind of dip it in and then, because you're going to kind of, almost like you're sponge painting this with the paper towel, you're just dabbing the yellow on, the yellow ochre on, pretty evenly across you want to still see that that yellow and we can still see a bit of that cream color underneath too there are places where the yellow is a little thinner a white I think would be too bright it would the colors wouldn't play as well with a white paper that's why I'm using a cream color I will talk in the blog post more about where, how come I have these directions and why they've been sitting in my, in my collection of things to do for so long. So if you want to know that story, go ahead and check the blog post. I'm going to wipe up as much of that as I can, and I'm going to take my woodsy smoke. This is where this gets extremely messy. A little bit out, get a toothbrush, an old beat up old toothbrush and a toothpick and really work that into your brush and I find it's a little less messy and just splatter paint this all over. I need a little more brown. I didn't want to waste too much paint and then I didn't put enough out. But you could use any brown you've got in your paint collection. You can see how much paint I've got all over me. It's also all over my shirt, just so you know. Don't, don't wear good clothes while you're crafting. And 
that. I'm going to continue to get this so I've got this more even So I because I'm missing this area here because my paint's going this way. I'm going to get this finished up. I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to do the other side because we need both sides of our paper finished. And when that's both sides are dry, I'll come back and we'll talk about the next step. All right, so now that this is all painted and the paint has dried, it's time to um, cut our tortilla shapes out. And that's simply going to be a process of cutting out half inch circles from this. You could use a hole punch. Personally, I've got my Cricut sitting on the end of the table because I needed it for something else this week and I've been too lazy to put it away. So I am going to take this opportunity to just go ahead and cut this in up with a half inch. I'll just set up half inch circle, get as many on as I can on this size paper and let the Cricut do all the work. When I have it all cut and have them off the mat, I will come back and we will move on to the next step. All right, here's all my corn tortillas all cut and ready to go. I did take, a, I mixed some of the two yellow colors together and I used a Q-tip and I just painted, I just covered the edges and any spots where the paint had come off when I punched them out. Remember, I did this with my Cricut and my blade's a little bit dull, so it did do a little tearing on a few, so I did have to do some touch-ups. So this paint is drying and meanwhile, we are going to start making some of our components that are going to go into our tacos. And what I have here is a piece of clay. It is about equal parts a red. I believe this is an old package of Sculpey 3 in red hot red. And then an equal amount of translucent or about an equal amount. We won't need a whole lot for this. And what I'm going to do kind of push this down on my tray. I've got yellow paint all over myself. And I'm going to dice this up into pretty small pieces. And if we don't use all of this today, that's perfectly all right. I can bag this up in a little plastic bag and put it in my cabinet where I keep little extra pieces of clay. And I can use this on another project sometime. Also, we're going to, if you want to make a scene with tacos, because we're not going to fill all the tacos, all the taco shells, we're going to make some shells empty. So you could really set up like a little taco making scene and have some of these tomatoes in a bowl. Or you can use them in a future thing. This would be cute in a little miniature salad. It could be anywhere. So I'm going to continue dicing this up. And then I'm going to transfer it to a paper plate. I'm going to bake it for um, probably, I'm only going to bake this about five minutes. I don't even need it to be cured all the way because it will be baked again on the taco. So when that's done, I'll come back and we can make the filling for our meat filling for our taco shells, our lettuce, and um, some cheese strips. And by that time, my tortillas will be dry and we can finish these tacos up. So I'll be right back. All right, I got my tomato pieces. They're all baked and cool. They're cooling off now, so I need to create the meat filling and then the lettuce and cheese. So what I'm going to do for the meat is the same, pretty much the same thing I did last week when I did the enchiladas. And that is I've got kind of a reddish brown clay and a dark brown clay. Exact colors don't matter. And if you've got a third color you want to throw in there, that's fine. We're just trying to get a little bit of variation in the color. And then after I chop it, I kind of mix it together and chop it up a little more. And kind of shift it around. And then what I do is I take these and without mixing them together, I just kind of squeeze them together. And I'm going to make a thin snake that's got this kind of mottled, not really marbled color, but a mottled color that is just these two colors of brown, or however many colors of brown you want to do. It looks, it just kind of gives the impression of a cooked meat. I'm going to put that to the side. Now I have some 
a fairly bright, kind of a limey green, because I didn't really have a color I really, truly liked really well in my uh, stash this morning in my greens. I don't know. I wasn't really feeling the greens I was seeing. Sorry, I'm digging through my my bin of clays I brought to the table because I need to get approximately the same amount of translucent. And now we're going to mix these together. If you've got a little bit lighter of a green, that's fine. Whatever green you want. It's going to be lettuce, so and I want quite a bit of translucent in it so that it has that kind of watery look that lettuce has. And it doesn't have to be mixed perfectly even. And I want to... being careful to keep them straight or the same or anything like that. Then I'm going to cut across every once in a while. And then kind of just And I think I'm actually going to bake this off now in this position so that this also is ready to go to be put on. That way I can break it apart. But let's go ahead and get the cheese shreds made first. And we'll do those at the same time. should have done this when I did the uh, tomato and I didn't even think of it. So what I've got here is kind of an orangey color and a yellow. going to blend this together and this will become our cheese and I, apologies if you're hearing that wind blowing we have a really bad windstorm going on right now and the window next to me makes a lot of noise when it's windy out now again I'm, I'm, I'm rolling this out just as thin as I possibly can to the point where it wants to kind of break. And again. And you'll notice I didn't blend this evenly. I've got some variation in color. I like that look a lot better. as it comes up. That way my cheese will have some movement. Same with the lettuce. I kind of kind of rolled it up as it peeled off. Now I'm going to bake these for also for five minutes and when those are baked and cooled I'll break them apart and I'll come back and we can start some assembly. All right now we have all our components for our tacos ready to go and ready to be put together as a taco. We have our cheese, we have our tomatoes, we have our lettuce over here to the side. I have some leftover um, white frosting that I had made a couple of months ago to go on another project. This is just white clay with TLS mixed into it. I've got that over to the side so I don't hopefully stick my hand in it. We have our little meat snakes and we have our tortillas. And I've got a couple of tools here. 
I have my piece of dry raw spaghetti, which I'm going to break both ends off of. I have my TLS. I have my pointy stick, and I have a couple of toothpicks. I'm going to need one more toothpick because the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to take our tortillas. We're going to lay a toothpick in the middle and we're going to form our taco shells. Now if you choose to make your tacos with polymer clay, make and you could follow my directions that I did on tortilla chips a couple of years ago on the channel, then make your tacos flat and don't bend them until you've got them filled. Uh, fill them and then bend them up and then bake them. But I found with the paper shells, I do need to bend them first. I've been playing around this morning. So, then, so I'll do that many now and I'll do the rest off camera. You don't need to watch me do each and every one of these. So let me get those off to the side. Whoops, didn't mean to hit the camera. So now, we're going to take our little snake of meat. First, we're going to get our toothpick. I've got my toothpick in my TLS. I'm going to put some TLS right in the bottom of my taco shell. Then I'm going to put my meat inside. And I'm just using my dental pick to kind of chop that off. Push it down. So I'm going to try and hold it up here so you can see it. Normally I would do this on the tray, but I want to have this hopefully so you can see it. And then we're going to do a similar texturing to what we did at the ends of our enchiladas last week. I'm going to have to try this on the tray. Hopefully you can see through my fingers. I'm going to do my best to hold it so you can. You just need to texture the very top and the very ends. Now, a little more TLS. A little bit more there. Now let's see if I can get my fingers out of the way. Take your spaghetti. And I find it helps me if I put out a couple of pieces on my tray. And some of those will have to be broken up, so I'm not going to... I'll have to break some of them up before I use them. There. So let's get a little bit of our lettuce mixture. And kind of break it up. And use your fingers and kind of and your fingernails and just kind of break this up so it's in pretty small pieces. I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way so it's a little harder to get these where I want them. Let's see if I can brace that up. And I like to put just a little more TLS on the top. And get a little bit of our cheese mixture out. And you can put as many or as few toppings on as you want. And I find it helps to have two toothpicks for this white uh, clay frosting that I've got. And this is acting as our sour cream. And, oh, come on. And of course it's arguing with me since I've got the camera on. So. I will continue to build tacos. Hopefully you saw that. Um, I will have pictures on the blog post. I'll try and do one here and take pictures after each uh, um, layer of filling so that you can see exactly what I'm doing in a picture. 
but after they are all filled, put them onto your paper plate on a piece of parchment, bake them at recommended temperature for 10 minutes, let them cool, and when I get all of these done, I'll come back and we'll look at our finished tacos. Well, there we have our finished tacos um, with all of their toppings. I mean, you can vary the toppings depending on what you want in your tacos. I've got plenty of tomato, lettuce, and cheese bits that I could set up like a taco bar with some bowls of that. I might do that in the future for a scene. I haven't decided. And then I have these taco shells that are left over. Uh, be sure and check the blog post. I did take step-by-step -step, um, pictures as I put these together. And I did find something. I did change one thing, putting these together versus the one I did on camera. I, was, I baked them off before I added our faux sour cream to the top. I found it was much easier to do that step once they were the first the rest of the stuff was all baked then the sour cream didn't knock out all my other toppings so i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did leave, leave a like leave a comment let me know what foods you'd love to see on a future saturday video check and like i said check the blog post if you enjoy my content and haven't subscribed hit that subscription button and the notification bell so you know when i put up a new video i thank you so much for watching today and i will talk to you next time bye